So now that we're starting a new chapter, we're going to begin, as is tradition, with nomenclature. Here we're going to cover the nomenclature of carboxylic acids and some of their derivatives, specifically esters and amides. The first thing we need to do here is expand our functional group priority list. In addition to that, we'll also cover the functional group suffixes for each of the functional groups that we'll be discussing, as well as substituent names for if they are not the parent functional group for a molecule. Now, the list that I'm about to show you here is complete. It covers all of the functional groups that we covered in Chem 2131 and 2132 through the end of the semester. We will be referring to this list one or two more times as the semester concludes, so please keep it handy. At the top of the list, the highest priority for functional group nomenclature is the carboxylic acid, followed by the ester, followed by acid chlorides, followed by amides. Acids have the suffix oic acid. Note that there is a space here, and this space is something we haven't seen before. It must be included in the name. If they are substituents, they're known as carboxy groups. Esters have the suffix O8, acid chlorides oil chloride, and amides have the suffix amide. If an amide is a substituent, it's known as a carbamoyl group. After amides come nitriles, which we'll cover in a later chapter, followed by aldehydes, followed by ketones. Nitriles are called nitrile as the parent functional group, that's their suffix. They're named as cyano groups if they are substituents. Aldehydes and ketones we covered in a previous chapter, they're named al and on respectively, and they're both given the name oxo as a substituent. Finally, at the bottom of the list, we have alcohols and amines. Amines have the lowest priority of functional groups that we will discuss in this class. Alcohols are covered in Chem 2131. Amines are given the suffix amine, and they are named as amino groups as substituents. All right, so let's apply this to name acids and esters. If I am to name a carboxylic acid, I'm going to follow the same procedure that I used for naming an aldehyde. Number the parent chain. This is a six carbon carboxylic acid. The parent functional group must be carbon number one. It has no unsaturation, so I'm going to call it hexanoic acid, hexanoic acid. There are some common names that we need to know for small carboxylic acids, just like there were for aldehydes and ketones. Specifically, formic acid, acetic acid, propionic acid, and butyric acid. These acids have common names that they're known by almost exclusively. In fact, the IUPAC guidelines actually does allow for the use of these in IUPAC names of derivatives of these compounds. So for instance, I could say I have 2-chloroacetic acid, and that would be a valid IUPAC name. If there are multiple carboxylic acids in the same molecule, we can use the same process that we used for naming aldehydes. Specifically, we're most interested in dicarboxylic acids with a structure like this, where we have some number of alkyl groups that's separating my two carboxylic acids. The IUPAC suffix for this would be dioic acid. Note that like with aldehydes, there are no locants here because it is implied that the carboxylic acid is at the end of the chain. Like some of the simpler carboxylic acids, there are also some very important common names for these compounds, which we will have to know. So let's take a look at those common names now. Oxalic acid, malonic acid, succinic acid, glutaric acid, adipic acid, and pimelic acid. Each of these has one more CH2 group separating the acids compared to the last. These names are required to know because they often come up in standardized tests. The MCAT, the DAT, and the ACS exam all have references to these acids by name, the reason being that these are all important in biological systems. Fortunately, there's a nice simple mnemonic device that we can use to keep these straight. It's, oh my, such good apple pie. The first letter of each of the words in this mnemonic device tell you the first letter of the name of each of the acids. So let's move on now to talk about esters. Esters are named by what's called the alkyl alkanoate system. Let me take this small ester uh, as an example. If I'm going to name this, the procedure for constructing the name is to pretend that this thing is derived from a carboxylic acid. Here, I would name the carboxylic acid functional group. This would be acetic acid. And then I would take that functional group and I would generate the name that I would apply to it if it were an anion. Following the IUPAC rules we cover in Chem 1251, we would name this acetate. The A-T-E ending is what you name an anion. Acetic acid becomes acetate. The other part of the name I'm going to construct from the blue part of the 
chain of the ester, I treat this as a substituent. So the full name for this ester would be ethyl acetate. So the ethyl is derived from the part that's bound to the ester oxygen. The other part is derived from the name of a carboxylic acid. If we're using full IUPAC rules here, uh, this would be coming from ethanoic acid, so I would call this ethyl ethanoate. So the ic acid is what's replaced with the ATE if we're generating one of these names. So try this yourself. Take this ester here, which is a lot more complicated than the one we've just done, and provide an IUPAC name. Pause the video and then come back to check your work. All right, step one. Step one, separate this into a parent and the ester group. We're going to name the parent first, so I'm going to find my parent chain. It contains two carbons, which means that this ester is a derivative of acetic acid or an acetate ester. At carbon two, I have a phenyl group. To name the ester, I find the parent chain of the ester. <coughs> It has two carbons, which means that ethyl is my parent chain with a hydroxy group at carbon two. So if we assemble the name, we put together the name of the parent, for the ester group comes in front. So if I'm assembling the name, the ester group comes first, two hydroxy ethyl, followed by the parent, two phenyl acetate. Note that there is a space here. Again, this is uh, not something we've seen before in the IUPAC name, but it is important. The full name of this compound would be 2-hydroxyethyl-2-phenylacetate. Amides are named in a way that's pretty similar to carboxylic acids. So for instance, this 4-carbon amide here would be called butanamide. The one wrinkle that we will encounter when naming amides is that we'll have substituents located on the nitrogen atom of the amide. The way we say where those substituents are is with the letter N. So this compound here is called nn diethyl metatoluamide. This tells us that the two ethyl groups are located at the amide nitrogen and not on any of the other carbons in the parent chain. You may have heard of this compound before. This is DEET, the compound in mosquito spray. So based on this system, try naming this amide here. So let's check your work. The name for this compound is N-ethyl N5-dimethyl hexanamide. We have a six carbon amide with a methyl group located at carbon number five and one at the nitrogen. We also have an ethyl group on the nitrogen. The substituents are always listed in alphabetical order. E for ethyl comes before M for methyl.